Ready or not, today is the day we are getting the pullet. All right, little buddy, are you ready to go get our new pullets? Yes. We're stopping off at my dad's real quick to get the dog carrier so we can transport the pullets back in something. Good morning, Dad. Good morning, son. Sheesh. Boise <laughs> I know. Oh, boy. Right, thanks, Dad. There. Yeah. Hey, John. Hey, how are you? Then? She would do a much better job of showing them to you and because she handles them and knows how to handle them. I'm just kind of like, you know, the right. Dad saying, exactly. You can't keep keeping all these rabbits to so Papa. And it gets handled by her the most, so she'd be able to just take it and it would just come to hang. So this is how I see her hold them. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, if you want to pet, you can, he's really wet, but you'll feel how soft this fur is. Yeah. And he has, the Rex has a, a particular type of fur that's, it's like the softest fur, like you can feel it. It's like maybe the softest fur you'll ever feel. It's, oh, wow. Yeah. The undercoat is the same length as the overcoat, so you get that. And it's, it, it, it's, a lot nicer when it's dry. It's all about how much they know about the rabbit and how they can handle the rabbit and you know interact with it um, for for the you know the pet uh, showing, which is what this would be. So this is a pet breed. This is not a meat breed. And again, like I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I think, and I'm not super knowledgeable about rabbits. My daughter could tell you a lot more. Right. But the mini Rex falls into that dual purpose. It's when you show it, you position it like a meat breed. You kind of hump it up and all that because you want to show the loin and all that. But when uh, it, my daughter does it, I believe, in the pet category. But when you're showing them for quality, you want it to show like a good meat rabbit. It's just a small version of a meat rabbit. It's kind of my understanding anyway. Gotcha. <laughs> the kids are off. <laughs> so this is Adam here. He's wet. So what do we need to know, just like a crash course on getting started with rabbits? I really know very little about yeah, you it. You might know almost as much as me at this point. <laughs> what, I, what I know is I require the rabbit to stay alive and healthy. My daughter fills in okay. all the lines. Basically they need food and water. Ours stay outside year round. You know, they don't come in for the winter or anything like that. Um, most of them live in these little like rabbit type huts. This, this one is nice because it's really small and you can move it. Like she can move it with a bigger tractor I have to move for. Her. And uh, and really, they're they're kind of like small sheep in that if they just have access to grass and water, they, they seem just fine. In the wintertime, we'll set them out up under that big carport just so that they're not getting snowed and rained on and sleeting on and all that. But that's it.
you have fun at the Shepherd Ranch? Yes. I don't think I've seen your face this dirty in a long time. But I have fun a little bit in the puddle. Yeah, I think so. How is everybody? You ready to get in the greenhouse? It's a little warmer in there. All the stuff I wanted to get done to get everything set up, ready for them, uh, I did not get done this morning. I had to rush through morning chores and then we had to head out. It's a long drive over to the Shepherd Ranch, so we were kind of, I need to get their water set up, feed in the feed pans. But also some folks have expressed concerns with the plastic not being a sufficient barrier for the chickens, they're going to tear it up. I don't know if that's an actual problem or not, but I think a solution for that would to be I can attach some of my wood stickers and use them as kind of a furring strip, an offset from the cattle panel, and then put hardware cloth over it. That way it would keep them off of the polyfill membrane. Got their water refilled. Once I get everything else situated, I'm gonna get some magic water in there for them, which is of course garlic cloves and apple cider vinegar, which will give them a really good immune boost. They're getting really anxious in there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and let them out, welcome them home. We actually got 14 of the pullets John said with this many pullets, chances are he messed up at least twice in the sexing. So there's probably a couple cockerels in there, so he threw in a couple extra to make up for that if that's the case. Alright girls, welcome home. Come on out. One last holdout in there. Oh, one just went back in. Oh, no. So we got one, two, three Rhode Island Reds. The two grayish looking ones are, I believe, Lavender Americanas. Most of the rest of them are Black Copper Morans. And there's also this one right I think that one right there is an Americana. Or is this one? So a couple Black Americanas, a couple Lavender Americanas. Three Rhode Island Reds and the rest are Black Copper Morans. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's a blue copper moran right there, too. They're already scratching around looking for bugs. One just got an earthworm down there. I imagine that's probably the first worm they've gotten. Well, this sure is exciting. The homestead population just increased by 14. I just finished putting the fencing up. That took a really long time. It was in bad shape. I'll explain that in a minute, but uh, I couldn't take the camera with me. It's raining pretty hard outside. I'm pretty drenched. If I can get this window open enough here. Okay, so I have the fencing up. This fence was given to us by our friend Beth. She has a small dairy herd of cows. I'm guessing due to the size of it, this is a poultry netting, and she said her cows trampled it and broke it, so she gave it to us, and 
Uh, I didn't quite realize it was in this bad of a shape. Where the camera's pointing right now, there's a, uh, a bunch of the fencing that's broken right there. This part of the fence you're seeing right now is actually doubled over. There's two layers of fencing there. The reason why I'm so soaked is because it took me a really, really long time to untangle that mess. It was really, really knotted. Once I got untangled, I saw all the damage there was, the missing step-in post. Some of the, the spikes on the step-in posts were pretty mangled. I think I got it to where it's okay because I have it doubled over in the areas where there was a lot of broken fencing. Okay, and I don't know if you can see this too well from here, but I have this black step-in post right there. I hooked up a poly wire over from where the energizer is over there and ran the line all the way over to this fence here so it will be electrified. This by no means is the Fort Knox of chicken coops but I really do think that the way it's set up now is more than sufficient. The netting will be electrified and that should be enough to deter most of predators and then the greenhouse itself will be locked and they may decide to all go back in there when it's time for bed tonight. When I come out here to check on them, I'll just close that if they're all in there and that'll give them that last barrier of protection. It's sufficiently dark now, so we're gonna go check on them. Nobody went in. We've got three on top of there. One on the roosting bar, everyone else on the ground. 